Hey stalkers, today we're going to talk about how to set up multiple outputs in contact in Reason. So the first thing I need to warn you is that ultimately Reason does not allow you to do this as well as other DAWs do. In other DAWs, you can actually send multiple pieces of MIDI information to each instrument within contact such that they're on a different channel and they play different notes. In Reason, there's no way to directly do this. Instead, every instrument in your contact rack has to basically play the same note. But I'm going to show you some tips and tricks to get around that at the end of this video. Before we go any farther, though, I want to ask you if you're using contact individually or if you like to stack instruments in it. Or if you've got a workaround, because I know there are some ways where you can rewire into Reason, or if you're using Reason uh, with some routing software and things like that, there's ways to get it. But directly within Reason, there's unfortunately no way to do this, and I, I don't do it. Another thing I want to add is that there are a lot of advantages to stacking one instance, multiple instruments within one instance of contact. And that is because when you do this, you don't have to use as much processing power, right? The pro you're only having one instance of contact, and you manipulate all the samples within, which does take up processing power, but not nearly as much as it does to create a bunch of different instances of contact and then have each of them have only one player within it. So let's get into how you would create multiple instances of multiple outputs in contact with for multiple instruments. The first thing you're going to want to do is go and create a instrument, a contact player. So the one thing I want to note is that contact six, which is just called contact in reason, only has the multi output instrument version, but contact five, you're going to have to select like the 16 out or the eight out. They're pretty much the same to use either way. It's just one light, light, light difference. So we've opened up a contact player. And now I'm going to bring it up here. You'll notice most of my instruments aren't installed, but not a big deal. Um, the next thing I want to do, though, before we go further, is to create some mix channels. We'll just create three for the purposes of this video. <clears throat> And then we'll hit tab to flip the rack over, open the CV programmer, and we'll set it so that the output of these channels goes to the uh, mix channels. So now we've routed the different things. We'll name them later. All right. Now we've got our contact open. And let's just do, um, where is it? Retro machines. So we'll do a polybrass. An electric piano. <clears throat> and a melody solo full. Sure. So if I hit a key on my piano, we're only going to be hearing the first sound right now because it's the one that's assigned to MIDI channel one. And Reason, like I said earlier, only has one MIDI channel for this type of routing. So what we're going to have to do is, if we want them all to play, is assign them clicking on the MIDI channel section to MIDI channel one. And now if I hit a note, <laughs> all playing. Unless my computer crashes. So now we have them all assigned to the same MIDI channel. And so they all play the same note together when I play a note. But they're all coming out of just one channel, right? There's only one output. They're all coming out of the stereo output here. So what we need to do is assign them to multiple outputs. So you, what you need to do is you need to get to the output window here. 
To pull that up, if it doesn't show up by default, you click on this panel here and make sure that the output section is selected. Now, what we're going to do to create is create a channel for each of them. So you hit on this plus button here, and you want to make the quantity three and the number of channels two. And you don't want to do this in reverse because basically two is a stereo, right? Left and right channel. You don't want to have like five channels. We're not doing surround sound. I don't think reason can handle surround sound, but um, you don't want to do this reverse. It's just the number of stereo channels. And then you want to set this to KT a contact stereo one, and that'll just make it as the starting point. And then it will automatically assign outputs from there ascending and let's just ex delete the existing channels because we don't need them hit OK and so now you'll see we have three stereo channels but if I hit a button everything is still going out of the main stereo channel so let's now assign EP10 to channel 3 and 4 you notice here on the mixer now it's coming out of here and we can rename this EP10 and then we'll assign the strings to output three. And we could rename that strings, but that will just close out the window. And that's not very fun. So right now, what I have gotten the ability to do is to just have three outputs, which is great because you can manage them on the mixer. Although, Reason also, or within contact, you can always just mix the volume of the channels and you can pan them. But this now opens the possibility of doing some other fun things. I mentioned earlier that there are some workarounds for everything being on the same MIDI channel. And the first one is that you can basically assign these instruments to different MIDI notes. So if you click on this wrench here, and then go to Instrument Options, you'll see something called MIDI Transpose. And so what you can do is you can make it so that this one plays, for example, an octave up. I transposed at 12. That's helpful. You know, that's one way of getting more play. And then let's take the second one. You turn the, hit that again to get it to disappear. We'll turn down the polybrass just so they're equal. Of course it disappears. Love it. Um, so for here on instrument options, we could transpose it like by five. So it's always playing the fifth. Another thing you can do is make velocity range mappings. So it only hits, for example, this fifth will only sound on with the velocity is within the range of 100 and 127. So I'm playing a note gently. You don't hear anything, but if I play it hard, you will. So that's one way you can get around it as well. You can also map it so that it doesn't apply to every key. One thing I want to talk about, though, that, and this is really important, is when using the MIDI transform, it's different than using this tune knob here. So you could also theoretically tune it 12, which would be like up an octave. And we can just hit solo here. But there are two different processes from this, the tuning process and the MIDI transform process. The MIDI transform process actually changes what the contact player views as the note going into it. And with sampled instruments, often, if you've got a nice quality library, every note is a separate sample, right? They record a middle C on a piano, then they record a C an octave up, they record the E right next to a few notes up, semitones up from that, you know, you then record them at different velocities. You have all of these different recordings. And so with MIDI Transform, what you're having it do is select a different note. 
but the appropriate note for what is being played. So, right, I play a uh, middle C. Instead, the software views it as C an octave up and selects the sample for that C an octave up. When you use tune instead, if I play middle C and increase the tune by an octave, what it does is it takes that sample for the middle C and pitch bends it up 12. And sometimes that can sound cool, but it can also lead to really unnatural sounds. So let's just solo this polybrass and... And that sounds pretty cool, but that's not, not the same as it would sound if I were to play down low. So hopefully these tricks have helped you figure out how to get the most out of using the multi-output aspects of contact in Reason. If you've got any other tips or tricks for how you can get more out of these, I'd really like to hear it. I like to use this a lot either when layering drums. You can put a bunch of drum hits that are just going to be triggered on the same key. It mixes really well. You don't need to worry about it. Or like if I'm doing something where I've got like a string section and you got all the low end strings, you also could have the low end brass. They're all playing the same note. It doesn't really matter. On a lot of arrangements, this works just fine. But you can't have like really complex interplays of notes because that's just not how it works. I hope you found this interesting. Actually, let me add one more tip. So, um, for example, some uh, contact instruments will have the ability to do ostinatos or arpeggios. So you could theoretically turn an arpeggiator on, on one of these and now... <laughs> And so we could also then go to this polybrass, and there's a chord version. So we could turn on chords, and so it would be like... So there are some ways to get a lot more information stacked on these, but ultimately you cannot really program in complex changes. Anyway, I hope you found this useful. Please let me know. Leave a comment below. Thank you so much for watching. Have a